OK, so let's try a couple more examples of these equations with absolute values. Well, what I want to do is give you an ex uh, a chance to see what you do if you have an equation with two absolute values in it. For example, suppose I see absolute value 3 minus 2x, and that equals absolute value 5 minus 4x. Now, How would you handle this? Well, all you have to remember is thinking about if two numbers are equal in absolute value, what does that mean? It means that they sort of must have the same size, but they just might have be off by a negative sign. So really, again, even though there are two absolute values, there are only two equations that are hitting or hiding, lurking in the background. It's either this thing equals that thing, or this thing equals negative that thing. That's all. So even though they're two absolute values, if you just think through what that means, right? If I say to you, I'm thinking of two numbers and their absolute values are equal, you know they're either going to be the same number or they're going to be one number and then it's negative. So again, just two equations to set up. One of them looks like this. 3 minus 2x equals 5 minus 4x. And then the other one is the similar thing. 3 minus 2x equals, and then a minus 5 minus 4x. By the way, I think it's sort of great, and I, and I hope that you can at least appreciate the fact that just by thinking through these things, you can actually figure out sometimes what the solution is or, or how to proceed. Just by thinking. A lot of times people panic or just you know, sort of thoroughly disgusted. But if you can just sort of take it easy and think about what these things mean and not memorize the rules, you can actually make some progress. So anyway, I, I like that feature about math myself. OK, let's solve this now. I'm going to bring the minus 4x over by making it a plus 4x. So I have a plus 4x with this minus 2x combined to give just a 2x. I still have that plus 3 out there. I'll write that on this side. It doesn't make a difference how I write it. Since it's a plus 3, I can just write it right here. And then on the other side, I just have the 5, because remember, I moved this over. If I bring the 3 over, it becomes a negative 3, and I see 5 minus 3 is 2. And so dividing through by 2, I see x equals 1. So there's one answer. And now solving this thing, well, let's see. This looks to me like it would be 3 minus 2x, and then I have the minus 5 minus 4x. Is that right? Why is it wrong? Well, again, I am making what I consider the number 4 on my top 10 list of fantastic classic mistakes. Bing! Number 4, the subtracting mistake. Don't forget, when you're subtracting a quantity, you've got to subtract everybody. Remember, folks, share the negativity. So that negative sign has to hit every single person. So in fact, this is wrong. A negative times a negative, this should be a positive. Great mistake, which I hope you'll never make. OK. Anyway, now solving this, I'm going to bring this um, positive 4. Look at that positive 4. That is a positive sign. Look at that. Whew. If I bring that positive 4 over to here, it becomes now a negative 4. Negative 4x and minus uh, 2x is about minus 6x. Actually, would you permit me to bring the 3 over to the side now as well? Thank you. If I bring that over, uh, that's going to become a negative 3. And so I see negative 3 and negative 5 is around negative 8. Dividing both sides by negative 6, I see x equals a negative divided by a negative is a positive. 8 sixth, which if I cancel becomes 4 over 3, so 4 thirds. So I see this is another answer. Um, x equals 4 thirds. Again, you should go back if you want and check. For example, let's check the 1. If I put a 1 in here, I see 3 minus 2. That's 1. Absolute value of 1 is 1. If I put a 1 in here, what do I see? I see 5 minus 4 times a 1, and 5 minus 4 is 1. So 1 equals 1. If you were to plug the 4 thirds back in here, what you would see is that these two numbers would be equal, but they would be off by a negative sign. So when I take absolute values, I'm fine. You can check that if you want. Anyway, so there's, um, there's a neat example when you have two absolute values. And the last example I wanted to look at uh, together is one where you have a fraction. So suppose I have something like this. 3a minus 4 divided by 2a plus 3. And suppose that equals 1. In fact, I'm going to give you an opportunity to try this on your own. So don't, don't get at all upset or, or, or worried about the fact it's a fraction. Just think about it as an absolute value equality. Think what that means. It means you've got to set up a couple of equations. See if you can set them up and see if you can solve them. I'll give you a chance to do it right now.